Okay, hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for our virtual information session for our graduate programs in counseling and counseling psychology at the University of Lethbridge. I'm Michaela Thompson. I'm the graduate enrollment management coordinator for the School of Graduate Studies and joining me today is Susan Pollock, who is the program manager for graduate programs in education. So today we're going to go through some really important information about two of our graduate programs, our Master of Counseling and Master of Education Counseling Psychology programs. Uh, and after Susan's presentation, we'll have a, a brief Q&A at the end. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn things over to Susan. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Michaela. I'm just going to share my screen here so everybody can see what I'm talking about today. Okay, so you should now see the, uh, the presentation there. And I just like to say hello and thank you for attending our information session where we're covering the uh, counseling psychology graduate programs that are offered in the Faculty of Education. And we have lots of content to cover. So I'm just gonna jump right into things here. So in this information session, we're going to provide an overview of the graduate counseling programs that we offer within the Faculty of Education. We will review the admission requirements in order that you can determine if you're ready to start your application. Uh, we'll examine the components that you need to include within your actual application itself. Uh, we will discuss the features of our programs to help you decide if they are going to meet your needs. And finally, we will look at potential career paths upon completion of one of the, the counseling programs. And as Michaela mentioned, we'll wrap that up with a question and answer period. So um, we often receive questions as to why counseling psychology programs are housed within a faculty of education when they're, they're counseling programs, why education? Well, the answer is that the field of counseling psychology grew out of vocational counseling and career counseling. And um, in most universities across Canada, it is actually found in the faculties of education, not all, but in most. And so within the Faculty of Education here at the University of Lethbridge, we do offer two distinct master's level counseling psychology programs, and they include the Master of Counseling and the MED Counseling Psychology Program. So I'm going to talk a bit about the features of these two programs and uh, hopefully this information will help you decide if they are suitable for what you're looking for. So uh, first, a huge strength of our programs is that we utilize a cohort model. Uh, so students are admitted to a cohort and they proceed according to the schedule uh, with their peers. So everybody's in it together, you're, you're taking your courses at the same time and you're going through and completing at the same time. Um, one of the really important factors from this is that students in each cohort become a support network for each other. And we have seen time and again that this network lasts far beyond the timelines of the program. And, and in some cases, we've even seen it, um, you know, those connections last for decades. Okay. Secondly, our programs are course based. And so what this means is that the coursework is aligned with the needs of the field. So it isn't simply a thesis that you're completing. So uh, there's quite a number of courses that are required and these all work towards competencies um, and requirements for professional bodies. And the courses are taught by qualified faculty with expertise in the area, all right? Uh, third feature is that both programs share um, a flexible location for practicum. So students arrange their own practicum placement, but um, one, of the, one of the benefits of this is that you as a student get to have a say in your training. So um, the type of placement that you're going to complete your practicum, uh, there's a wide range of, of areas. And, and so you know, you get to have a say in terms of the specific training that, that you're hoping to achieve. Um, the practicum can be completed from virtually anywhere. Of course, it's pending approval of your supervisor and your agency. And we do have uh, very strict criteria that need to be met in terms of that. And we also need a commitment that you're going to attend the on-campus seminars. 
um, you're not left to your own devices in, in terms of setting it up. So while you get to choose the placement location um, and there is some work on the, the side of the student, that doesn't mean you're in it alone. So you do get a, a very good orientation before commencing a, a search for a placement. And uh, our program specialist, Kevin Mattis, as well as the faculty member who's uh, currently acting as the practicum coordinator will be a, a great resource for you. Okay. And you do receive lists of approved, approved sites and supervisors, so you're not starting from scratch. All right, a fourth feature is that our programs align with certification. So specifically, uh, both of our programs, both the Master of Counseling and the MED Counseling Psychology program, meet the requirements for Canadian Certified Counselor with the CCPA, so that is with the Canadian Counseling and Psychotherapy Association. And they also meet the requirements for registered psych in terms of the graduate components uh, within the province of Alberta. So that is with the College of Alberta Psychologists. Um, uh, we're very excited that we are currently, as of, as of uh, you know, late 2020, we are at the moment one of only two programs that have been approved by the College of Alberta Psychologists to vet students on their behalf moving into provisional status. So um, we're very, very proud of the work that we've done uh, with the College of Alberta Psychologists and that we're, we're um, like I said, one of only two programs within the province to have currently met that requirement. Okay, so let's next take a look at the admission requirements. Um, it is worth noting that the counseling programs are very competitive. So we do recommend that you submit your application once you're confident that you have at least the minimum requirements met. Um, if you're not sure, even after this presentation, whether or not um, that's the case, then I do recommend reaching out to Kevin Mattis to have a conversation with him or an email um, to, to determine whether or not that's the case. And he's a, a wonderful resource for you. So he can't actually provide an admission decision, but he can give you some guidance in terms of whether or not you've met the requirements or if you should maybe um, take a look at beefing things up in some areas. So let's take a look at what the minimum requirements are for admission to our graduate programs. All right, first you'll need to have completed a baccalaureate degree. So that means a four year degree. And we have had successful applicants come from a variety of backgrounds. So BA, BSc Psychology, um, Bachelor of Addictions Counseling, Bachelor of Social Work, Bachelor of Nursing or Management. And it is important to note that while a Bachelor of Education is a perfectly acceptable um, baccalaureate degree, it's not required, okay? So just because um, we have the MED Counseling Psychology Program, sometimes people feel that they can only apply if they have a B.Ed. and that's not the case. You can apply to either of our programs with a variety of backgrounds. In terms of GPA, uh, a minimum 3.0 on the 4.0 scale is required. Um, it is calculated on the terms, so the terms containing the last 20 courses, which have a grade other than pass fail. So if you're not sure what your, your GPA is going to look like, um, it certainly isn't, isn't too difficult to figure that out on your own. Simply start with the most current term that you have uh, grades assigned and just keep counting backwards until you reach the term that includes the 20th course and make sure that you include all of the courses within that final term. Um, given COVID, some institutions were providing grades that were a credit or non-credit. And if you have questions about how this is gonna relate to your GPA, again, I'd recommend reaching out to Kevin Mattis or to our admissions office. Um, and they can give you a hand with, with those kinds of things in terms of the um, unique circumstances that have happened with COVID and, and some grading. Okay, we do also require approximately two years of relevant experience. Uh, the best kind of experience is where you are helping to facilitate change in others. So this can be work or volunteer experience. It can be part-time or full-time. 
if you've been working part-time, you're simply going to prorate that in terms of hours per week to figure out how much that would count towards the full-time, two years of essentially full-time experience. Okay, next, uh, breadth of undergraduate psychology courses. So we, we do within our admission uh, section on our website, we do state some specific areas, um, learning, development, abnormal psych, things like that, counseling skills, in terms of courses that we think are going to give you a good background of experience. But we really are looking for any undergraduate psychology courses that are gonna give you breadth of uh, of uh, background to assist you going into your master's program. So really any undergrad psych courses are going to help you. Um, I would say that in our experience without having two to three courses in psychology, it would be very difficult to be successfully admitted. So, you know, we, we do suggest that you have at least two to three undergraduate psychology courses completed before you uh, think of applying. Um, again, reach out to Kevin Mattis if you have questions about what might be relevant um, in terms of the breadth of courses. And finally, if required, we would ask for some English language proficiency. Okay, so if you've determined that you have met the minimum requirements, then the next step is figuring out what do I need? What, what pieces of the application are going to be required? Whoops. So um, in terms of application documentation, uh, you will need to, to upload working copies of your transcripts. Okay, so we don't need official transcripts at the time of application. If you're successfully admitted, then you will need to provide official uh, transcripts from your post-secondary institution. But for the process of the application itself, you just need the working transcripts. However, you do need to make sure that you include every single post-secondary institution that you have attended. So even if you took one course straight out of high school, you took a, you know, a course at maybe Athabasca University before you were admitted to another program, we do need a transcript for that. And you should include that content in your educational background information within your within the actual application. Um, okay, so just again, make sure you upload every single uh, transcript that you have. Okay, the next item we've got here listed is the references. So we do need three references. Um, how it works is within the online application, you will simply enter uh, the name and the email address of the individuals who have agreed to act as a referee for you. So please obviously be sure to ask your referees to act in this capacity in advance of you submitting their name in the system. Um, how it works is you do not request a letter from them. Okay, so you're not going to reach out and say, hey, you know, Dr. Jones, I, I need a letter of reference. Instead, what you need to let them know is that you will be um, submitting their name and that they will be contacted to submit information within our online system. Okay, and they will process their evaluation directly within our online evaluation system. And so um, they will be asked a number of questions. Some are drop down boxes, some are text boxes. And, uh, you know, there is an opportunity for them to upload documents as well. But really, it's like they're uh, completing a survey within our system. And one nice feature of the application system that we utilize is that you do have an opportunity to check the status of your references. So you can actually log into the application system and see if they've started it. Um, if it, uh, one of the other features that is there is that you can actually send a reminder. So a nice gentle nudge to them to say, please do uh, submit when you have time. And Probably the, the number one question that, that we do receive in terms of the application is uh, whether or not you can submit an academic um, reference in lieu of professional or vice versa. So as an example, if you've been out of academia for 20 years and you have no, no way of tracking down your professor from 20 years ago, then please, by all means, just submit a professional reference uh, in lieu of that academic one. That, that is perfectly acceptable. Um, again, make sure that you give lots of time for the referees to, uh, 
to have an opportunity to um, submit their, their information into the system. Okay, another piece of item that you're, or another item rather that you're going to need to include is a letter of intent. And please, one to two pages is sufficient. We have a lot of applications to review and you know, we, it, it is definitely in your best interest to be succinct in your letter of intent. Um, what we're looking for is, uh, it gives you an opportunity to outline your interest in the program and what you intend to do career-wise. So what's your intended career outcome? Uh, as well, a curriculum vitae or CV. So um, essentially this is a resume that includes publications if that's suitable. Uh, so if you're not sure what a CV is, that's essentially just a resume. Um, if required, so if it's appropriate for you, then you would submit your ELP, your English language proficiency test scores. And if you are applying to the Master of Counseling program only, then you will need to submit a work experience form. Okay, so um, as I alluded to previously, uh, the application is an online process. Once you have all of these items in place, it doesn't actually take a lot of time to get through the application itself. Um, but we do want you to submit in advance of the deadline. Okay, so um, as noted here, the application deadline is December 1st. We definitely recommend that you don't wait until the very end. Um, you know, we want to be able to have an opportunity to reach out to you to have reviewed your application and, and, you know, if there's any pieces that we notice that are missing or we want to reach out and ask anything else that uh, we've got an opportunity to do that before the admissions committee is reviewing. And the other thing that's important to note is that the referees also have to submit by December 1st. So please make sure that you give the your references enough time to actually, um, you know, take to allow them sufficient time to complete and to keep in mind that many of these faculty members receive 10, 20, 30, 40 reference requests uh, prior to the application deadline. So they do need a significant amount of time. And um, I guess uh, the other thing that I didn't mention is to make sure that when you're in the application, so when you enter the information for the references, there's a little button that says submit uh, information to recommender or something of that nature. So make sure that you actually submit the button. So there's one button for each of the three individuals and that will shoot out that email to them. So that's something else to, to keep in mind in terms of the, um, the application itself. Okay, so we've talked about what the minimum requirements are, what you need to do in terms of actually applying for the program. Now it's a matter of deciding which program suits my needs. So a reminder, we've got the two programs, so the Master of Counseling and the Master of Education Counseling Psychology. Right now I'm going to talk briefly about the Master of Counseling program. And one of the distinguishing features for this one is that it is designed for working professionals. Okay, so it's designed to help you navigate the challenges of balancing both a master's program and your career at the same time. Okay, one of the ways that we make that feasible is that we have a blend of online coursework and face-to-face -face components. So the on-campus components uh, include the summer institutes and that takes, takes place on campus at the University of Lethbridge and it lasts for two weeks in July. Uh, there is on-campus accommodation that students can book uh, so that you can stay on campus for those summer components. Um, and as noted previously, uh, you will complete a practicum within your program and it doesn't have to be in Lethbridge. So um, you will need to come back on campus in just for those um, typically about a four day practicum seminar for each term of your practicum placement. Okay, so that's two terms at the end of your program. So the on-campus component include again, the, the three summers in July for two weeks each summer, as well as in the last two terms of your program, a several day weekend seminar for your, your practicum seminar. Okay, the program itself is three years in duration. So uh, you know, allows those courses to be spread out so that you can continue working. 
And for the Master of Counseling program, we do have an intake every other year. So we're admitting right now to start in 2021, and we won't be doing that again until 2023. All right, so a little bit more information about the practicum. So we did talk a bit about it previously, but the one other thing that you should be aware of in terms of um, still being a working professional is come year three, you do need, do need to be prepared to potentially reduce your workload during your practicum placement. So it is going to require about two and a half to three days a week being dedicated to your practicum placement. Um, so many individuals do take a leave of absence or reduce their, their work hours significantly during that eight month time frame. Um, culminating activities. So we do give you two options. So there's a project or a professional portfolio that you may opt to complete. And in terms of the cost of the program, so for Canadian students, it's about $21,000 and that includes your program fees, your course fees, and any miscellaneous fees. Um, it is more expensive for international students, and I do recommend that you just take a look at the fee schedule to determine what the cost would be for your specific situation. All right, so hopefully many of you have already checked this out on our website, but this is an example of the Master of Counseling schedule. So this is the specifically the, the schedule starting in summer 2021. And as you can see, you would be taking all of the courses with the online on-campus components in the summer. From September to December, there would only be one course online. And from January to April, again, one course online. And we sort of follow that pattern for the first couple of years um, into your third summer. And then in your final two terms of your your program, you would be completing your practicum placement, and as well, you'd be wrapping up your, uh, your culminating activity. So again, your, your program would be complete by April 2024. Okay, so moving on to the Master of Education Counseling Psychology program. So this is different from the Master of Counseling in that the MED Counseling Psych program is fully immersed in graduate studies. So that's that's who our students are. Okay? They are fully immersed in graduate studies. Courses are offered during the day and due to the course load, it is not feasible to be working during this program. Um, all of the courses are covered within the first year of the program and they're on campus at the University of Lethbridge. Um, it is a two-year program, so again, much more condensed, uh, allowing you to kind of complete your program requirements and get out into the field. And we do now offer this program every single year. Okay, again, the practicum, uh, which we spoke about in terms of flexible location. So, uh, you know, flipping this to think of, well, it's an on-campus program, but keep in mind that that practicum is actually a flexible location. So you don't have to complete your placement within the city of Lethbridge, you can do it anywhere. And we've actually had students from as far away as United Arab Emirate, and they just, made sure that they came back for the several day practicum seminar each term. So as long as you're amenable to that, uh, you know, you really do have a, a large flexibility in terms of location. The culminating activity options are important in the MED Counseling Psych program. Um, the, we do have three options for you to choose from. So there's a capstone, a project, or a thesis, and quite honestly, most students opt for the capstone. Um, however, if you intend to pursue a PhD in the future, then a thesis is recommended. And one thing that sets us apart from many of L graduate programs is at the time of application, you don't need to state who your supervisor is because you're not actually gonna figure that out until after you've got you know, a good start on your coursework. So. Um, if you're wondering if you've started your application process and you, you know that you want to do a thesis and you're saying, well, why don't I have any place here where I need to indicate who my thesis supervisor is going to be? It's because you don't actually decide that at, upon application. It's not until you get into the program that you would start to think about that. 
And even at the start of your program, you're not really going to know the answer to that yet. We'll give you an orientation to all of the various options um, and actually starting your coursework. And most importantly, uh, getting well into your research course is really going to help you decide whether or not that's something that you want to take on. Um, as I mentioned, it has the potential to lead to a PhD with a thesis, and that is really important to consider um, given the, the landscape in, in Canada these days, specifically within Alberta as well, but I would say across the country. Um, it is so competitive for counseling psychology programs right now that applying to a PhD program, it is typical that a thesis is required. Even five years ago, that wasn't necessarily the case. So it could have been the case that you had a project and you published your results. And, um, you know, just obtaining publication in the area uh, would have been sufficient to maybe um, be successful in a PhD application. But what I would recommend is if you are contemplating a PhD, check the requirements for your specific PhD of interest so that you can determine whether or not a thesis is required or not. And for this particular program, the cost for Canadian students is $12,500. Again, if you're an international student, I do recommend checking the fee schedule specifically. Okay, and here is our schedule. As you can see, the first year is jam packed with courses. So you're going to take one course that's three weeks long in July. And then from September through to April, you have a lot of coursework, you're heavily immersed in your program. Um, you know, it's, it's, as you can see, uh, why we say it's, it's not feasible for individuals to be working during this, this program. Um, because you get in, you, you take a lot of the courses in a quick time frame, and then you know you manage to get out in two years. Uh, one other thing worth mentioning is that if you do opt for a project or a thesis, it does typically extend your program and it does actually include additional course fees. Okay, so just to quickly go over the program comparison to make sure that everybody is is aware of you know what are the main features of each program and how are they distinct so the MED counseling psychology program is only a couple years in duration it's on campus you know it's a little bit cheaper program but it does afford you the opportunity to complete a thesis uh, we do have an intake for that every single year and the students are here on campus and that is opposed to the master of counseling which really is designed for working professionals. It's spread over three years, so you can remain working and the, the blended delivery um, does help you, again, remain working while you're taking the program. It is a little bit more expensive at $21,000 and it does not offer a thesis route. So if a PhD is something that you're really thinking about, then we do highly recommend that you think of applying to the MED Counseling Psych program. And as we alluded to previously, uh, December 1st is the application deadline for both of the programs. Okay, so we're gonna switch topics a little bit. And I, I really wanted to highlight that we have two counseling programs and we also have upon graduation from those programs, two career routes. Um, okay, so sometimes people get really confused about the programs, um, you know, is it the program that, that is registered or certified and it's not, it's your career route after you complete your graduate requirements. Okay, so the first career path that we're going to talk about is a Canadian Certified Counselor. And so that is a national body that certifies you. So it's the Canadian Counseling and Psychotherapy Association. So CCPA is typically what you'll hear as the, um, the acronym for that. And you would have CCC. So uh, again, alphabet soup is what one of our faculty members calls this. Uh, so CCC with the CCPA is one of the routes that you can take upon graduating from our programs. So the CCPA is only going to look at the graduate courses that you've completed within your program. 
Okay, they're not going to look at anything else. So once you've finished one of our grad programs, you are ready to roll in terms of meeting the requirements that they've got. Um, and actually, just to back up there for a second, it is really important to know that CCC is considered the minimum standard within Canada in terms of being a professional counselor. Okay, um, and that is is important to know. So you know, once you get your grad degree, you can immediately go into Canadian Certified Counselor, and that is the minimum. Okay, so if CCC is the minimum, so then what are the other options and, and why are they not considered the minimum requirements? Well, as an example in Alberta, so our programs are designed to meet the College of Alberta Psychologist requirements for registered psychologists. Um, if you're joining us from other provinces, you may be aware that in other provinces, there's actually a PhD requirement for um, registered psychologists, but that's not the case in Alberta. All right. Um, one of the things that is different about registered psychologist status is they don't look at just the graduate courses. So um, while our program does meet all of the graduate requirements that they have to become registered psychologists, there are additional requirements for registered psychologists, um, specifically with the College of Alberta Psychologists, and that is um, several years, so approximately two years worth of undergraduate psychology courses. And some of those courses have to be in very specific areas. So areas like social basis of behavior, biological basis of behavior, um, cognitive affective, and psychology of the individual. So if you are in the province of Alberta, I recommend that you go and you check the College of Alberta Psychologist website and um, actually get the definitions there in terms of which courses would be suitable so you can try and figure out in advance um, which of the coursework you've already got got completed and in addition so you're going to have your undergrad psych courses you're going to have your grad program all complete once you have both of those elements done so you have to already have your undergrad psych courses and your grad program you know have convocated from that then what happens is you get your provisional status so at that time, then you can start additional hours of supervised training, and you do typically have to pay for that supervised training. And it's important to note that because you have to have completed your graduate requirements already in order to start your supervised training, the practicum hours you completed in your grad program don't count towards that. So it is 1600 hours of supervised training, so it is quite a lot. Um, you know, so you can bank on a, approximately one extra year after your graduate program, like from the time that you get your provisional status to the time that you're sort of ready to wrap things up and become a psychologist. So uh, again, supervised training, you'll have an ethics exam, an oral exam, and those are again completed after your degree. So you can see why uh, registered psychologist status is you know, it's more work, it's more um, requirements, more hoops to jump through. So it's more than the minimum requirements, but it is at least in the province of Alberta, um, it does open a few more doors in terms of employment. So uh, it definitely is a route that most of our students um, follow in Alberta. Okay, so as I mentioned previously, the MED and the MC are both approved program pathways. Uh, so, you know, what that means is you're going to have seamless entry into provisional registered psychologist status from the MED or the MC, and it's based on our recommendation. So we will vet you after you've been admitted to program. Okay, so it's important to keep in mind that the courses that you need at the undergrad psych for admission to the program are not the same as the courses that you need to prove um, that you've met the registered psychologist um, requirements at the undergrad. Okay, so that's why we allow you to, uh, you can get into the program without having all of the full coursework, uh, the full two years undergrad uh, equivalent. So, you know, please don't feel like, oh, I'm not ready to, to be passed along with, in terms of moving immediately into provisional um, registered psychologist situation and that's okay you don't need to be at that that place in order to apply to program okay so there 
we can push you through for um, an approved program status, but you aren't necessarily going to be in that boat. So please don't feel that you need to uh, not apply to the program because you're not there yet. Okay, as long as you have several courses and you meet the admission requirements, then, then it's suitable in terms of applying to a program. Okay, so in terms of contacts and resources, uh, if you have any questions, please do feel free to email us at edu.masters at ulef or at our master.counseling at ulef, um, and sorry, I should say at ulef.ca. And uh, Kevin Mattis, many of you will probably already have had uh, communications with, and he's a program specialist who uh, deals with both of these programs and is a great resource for you. And as well, there's a number of websites there and they do, so um, once you go to the Future Student website, it will give you information on both of the programs. It has information in terms of the admission requirements, the application process, details about the supporting documents, um, student stories, things like that. So uh, it is a really good source of information for you. So I will uh, allow Michaela an opportunity now to, um, you know, to switch things over to the, the question and, and answer portion of the program. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, we do have a couple questions. Uh, so I'll start with uh, can applicants apply to both programs or can they only apply to one program in a given intake? That's a great question. Uh, so the answer is you must apply to one program. So you do have to pick and choose which one you feel best suits your needs. And that is the, the program that you apply to. And again, keep in mind that not all of the programs are offered every year. Um, you know, so it, and again, those the features, you know, do I want to stay as a working professional? Do I want to go on to do a PhD? Do I want a thesis route? Those are things that you need to uh, think long and hard about in terms of what's the best program for me. Great. Yeah, lots of important considerations that are going to depend on the, the particular applicant. So thank you. Um, in terms of funding for both programs, what funding opportunities are available to applicants for both programs? Uh, okay, so we do have two main components um, for funding for our students. The first is scholarships. So the majority of our scholarships come as entrance awards within the first year. Um, and normally across our programs, we typically distribute over $100,000 just for the Faculty of Education graduate program. So, you know, there certainly is some, some significant um, funds there, especially because our cohorts that we take in, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned that there's about 20 students per cohort. So, you know, that's, that's not a lot of students that that money is spread across. So, you know, it, it can certainly, if you're lucky enough to be um, a successful candidate for a scholarship, then certainly it can make a big difference in terms of the, the fees that you have to pay. Um, so that's the first um, source of funding for our students. And as well, students can apply for a graduate assistantship. So how that works is they would work for several hours per week, four hours for a part-time, eight hours for a full-time GA ship. And you would provide a faculty member with um, assistance with their research. And so that, you know, that remuneration that you get from acting as a GA certainly can benefit you. So that's typically 36 or $7,200 per, um, per graduate assistantship. And it typically, just so people are aware, the MED counseling psychology students do normally take priority for the graduate assistantships in that they are not able to work in the field. Okay, so because Master of Counseling students are still employed, um, you know, it is it is a program designed to allow them to still maintain their their careers as a, you know, sort of small C counselor, um, then it, the the priority does go for the GAs to the, the individuals who are not able to work in, um, while they're completing their program. Great, thank you. Um, just on that piece about um, fees, I know you mentioned um, in the presentation that the fees are a little bit different for international versus domestic students. Um, and I would, I would recommend that everybody just review the fee schedule, um, particularly if they're not planning on applying this year, um, just because those fees can change sometimes and it's, it's always good to be aware of the most up-to-date 
fees and the fees that will apply to a particular student situation. So thank you. Um, yeah, okay, actually, I, I might just add to that, Michaela. Sorry, mm -hmm. just a quick interruption there. Sorry about that. Um, so if you are an international student and you're thinking of applying, it is important to note that um, typically speaking, student visas are not given for blended delivery programs. So normally what happens is you would be, you would have to apply for a visitor's permit for each of the timeframes that you were going to be on campus in July, for instance, for the Master of Counseling. Um, you know, if you're applying to the MED Counseling Psychology Program, then that is on campus. And so you would be, um, you would receive a student visa if you were successfully admitted and your visa application went through. So those are things that uh, talk to the International Center and they can give you a hand on any details related to that. Absolutely, all right, thank you. Uh, okay, our next question is about the, the work experience requirement. So what kind of work or volunteer experience counts towards that requirement? Um, we do accept a, a wide range of experience and it's, it, you know, keep in mind it could be part-time or full-time. Um, the admissions committee is looking for um, how you've facilitated change in others. So things like teaching, coaching, um, working in a group home, maybe you've been assisting an individual with special needs or working in an addiction center. Um, that's just a small list of things that we would consider suitable. Um, if you don't think that you have enough relevant experience, because sometimes when you're just starting out, it can actually be tricky to try and get a foot in the door in, in terms of relevant experience. And I would highly suggest uh, reaching out to a distress line. They do great training. And, uh, it, you know, so if you are accepted to work on the distress line, like I said, great training and um, it really will give you insight into the field. Um, it'll really, really open your eyes. If you haven't had much experience uh, in, in relevant areas, it's certainly going to be valuable experience for you. All right, that's great advice. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on, I will be practicing in British Columbia. Um, do these programs meet the needs of the BCACC and other another alphabet soup there. Yes, great. So BCACC is the BC Association of Clinical Counselors. And um, so many of our students do go on to RCC is, is what um, they're, so that's Registered Certified Counselor in BC. So that's kind of the equivalent of the, the CCPA's version, but it's just at the provincial level. Um, so we do have many, many of our students complete our programs, either the MED Counseling Psych or the Master of Counseling, and go on to RCC status in British Columbia. Um, like any of the, the situations, uh, regardless of where you're living, we do highly recommend you look closely at the jurisdiction where you intend to practice. Um, you know, we have the ethics course that you're going to take in program actually does cover a lot of this type of information, making sure that you're aware of the, the standards of, of conduct, um, you know, the, the code of conduct, standards of professional practice for the body that you are going to be practicing under. So it's important to also remember that across North America, there's probably more similarities than there are differences. So, you know, pretty much any reputable counseling program is going to have um, you know, they're going to have courses in ethics, in skills, in interventions, in assessment, all of those things that you're going to need to register or certify with whichever professional body um, is appropriate for you. Um, so just keep that in mind that wherever you're looking for in terms of, you know, eventually practicing, uh, carefully look at the requirements. But again, we've had students from across Canada and as an example, you know, back to that RCC in British Columbia. So our program meets almost all of those requirements. There is a group therapy course that you can take within the Master of Counseling program. That's one requirement they have um, in addition to our core courses. And in BC, they also require a family systems therapy course, which our graduates have simply taken on a, a one-off basis. Um, through an online program and they've, they've managed to meet those requirements. So those are, you know, great question in terms of 
making sure that you are preparing for the, the right professional body. Great, thank you. Um, okay, for applicants who are currently completing their bachelor's degree in psychology or another related discipline, um, if they'll be finished in April, can they apply now uh, for the December 1st application deadline? Yes, absolutely. So somebody's in their final year of program in their undergrad. And so absolutely, if you have met the two years of experience, so, you know, maybe you've been working summers and you volunteered and you had some, you know, a couple of years of, of related experience along the way, done some co-ops, things like that, then absolutely, if you meet the other admission requirements, you can apply now. And what would happen is that um, if you are successfully admitted, then uh, your, your successful completion of your program in April would be a requirement. So you would have a conditional offer of admission. Great. Um, related to that, I know that, that often um, undergraduate students will complete their degrees uh, over the summer, perhaps in the summer, one of the summer terms. Um, so given the intake for both of these programs, they would need to complete their undergraduate degree in April. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, our final question is, I'm currently taking undergraduate courses in psychology. Um, how do I know whether my courses that I'm, I'm taking will count towards my admission requirements? Okay, and that's a great question. Um, so because of the December 1st application deadline, we can only essentially give you a check mark uh, associated with having completed that course if there's a grade on your transcript. Okay, so you're not going to get credit for having completed the course unless it's done and showing on your transcript as of the, the application deadline. We will still require the final transcripts. Um, so if you're successfully admitted or um, offered admission, you know, you are going to have to provide the final transcripts, but we can only count them. We can only give you credit for it if it's actually complete and has a grade associated with it as of the December 1st application deadline. Having said that, um, you know, it certainly doesn't hurt. And I'm sure that the admissions committee, while you don't get an official check mark associated with that particular course, it certainly is beneficial to you, regardless of whether or not you want to go on to the registered psychologist status and you need to meet that two year minimum requirement, or whether or not you're just taking a course to, you know, again, we ask for a breadth of courses. So if all of your coursework has been in the area of, say, abnormal psych, and you want to take a course in learning or personality, uh, you know, that's going to better prepare you for your grad program. So it certainly is worthwhile even if it's not going to help you in your actual application. Great, excellent advice, thank you. Um, okay, so that does it for our questions. So I'll say once again, thank you to Susan um, and the, the contact information that you shared earlier, I'll also make sure that that's in the description of this video. So if you have any follow-up questions after the session, please don't hesitate to reach out to uh, one of the emails that Susan shared earlier as well. There's always um, very detailed and comprehensive information on our website. Um, so make sure if you're planning on applying to one of these programs, which we hope you do, uh, that you review the program pages for the relevant program and always reach out if you have additional questions. So thank you again, Susan. I hope you're all staying Thanks well so much, and Michaela. that we, we see you on campus uh, when we can. Uh, take care, everyone.